Hi, everybody. Welcome to Precalculus. What I want to show you is that uh, on your graphing calculator, and you don't, you don't need the graphing calculator today, so don't worry if you don't have it handy, but on the graphing calculator, um, when, you, when you push mode, and you come down here, the fourth line, Okay, funk means function, like y equals x squared, things like that. POL, that's what we that's what we just recently learned. Polar coordinates, and when you're when you're in that POL mode, it uh, you have r and theta. This one on the right, SEQ, that's actually for sequences and series. We're not going to worry about that one, but there is a fourth one. And it says PAR. And when I hit enter, and then I say second quit, well, it doesn't look like much changed. However, when I push the Y equals button now, I now see a kind of unusual thing where it says X1T, Y1T. And when I push window, I see this T min, T max, T step, X. I'm going to explain what all that means today. And today's going to be one of the easier days because it's the introduction to this new topic. <clears throat> but tomorrow it gets a, a little bit harder than each day. And this unit is only about, it's about eight days. So let me now go back to the smart board. Okay, so parametric equations, and let me bring the chat window up for myself there. Okay. Okay, now it's good. A parametric equation is something like this, where there's actually two equations. One says x equals, one says y equals. And there's this third mysterious variable called t. And here, and when, when, when I put those, those two things together, those things qualify as a single parametric equation. And the way it works is you... Um, the independent variable, when there's an x and a y equation, just an x, y equation like the regular type, usually we make the x value the independent variable and the y value the dependent variable. But for parametric equations, the independent variable is not x or y, but the independent variable is t. So you pick any number you want for t. I like to start with 0. And I make my chart. My chart's got three columns. It's got t, x, and y. So when you plug zero in, into this top x equation, it becomes negative one-tenth. And when you plug that same t value, zero, into the y equation, you get three. If you plug one for t into the x equation, you get one plus one is two, you get uh, one, one positive one-tenth. And when you plug one into the y equation, you get four. And if you do this for a couple of values, I'll just do two and three. You can see here, I'll show you how I made that on the graphing calculator. Two is nine-tenths and five, and three is two and nine-tenths and six. Now, what you do with these numbers now this graph, this graph is an xy graph. And what you plot, the points that you plot, and I'll plot them in red, you take the x and y value for each t, and you plot those as x and y. So negative 1, 10, 3, you know, is, is, is somewhere over here. And then 1 tenth comma 4, is somewhere over here, and nine tenths comma five 
you know, somewhere over there. So the T is not involved in the graph at all. When we see a graph, when we see a point, the point has an X and a Y value for a T, but we can't see it on the graph. Now, sometimes people will go like this. They'll actually say T, let's say this was a, uh, would correspond to, to this line here. They might say T equals two, and then even put in parentheses what the X coordinate and Y coordinate are. Or they may not even write that. They might just write T equals two to tell you like what T value caused that point to happen. So that's the most basic thing to know about parametric equations. Let me see if I'm able to uh, switch to the graphing calculator. I'm getting faster at doing this. Okay, so here's the graphing calculator again. So if, I, if I'm in parametric mode and I go to window, I can come here and I can say, well, I want T to go from zero to 20. And my T step is gonna be 0.1. So it's gonna make a bunch of points. The X, and, the X man, Y man, that's all the stuff for, for, for the X and Y axes. Now, if I come over here and I type in those equations, I'll go, um, I think if I go alpha and Y equals, I get a nice ability to create something like this. Now, when I push the X value, it doesn't make an X, it doesn't make a theta, but it does make its T. So T cubed plus T minus one, that was a four minus one in the numerator. In the denominator, it's 10. And as part of the same parametric equation, we have to put the y equation, which was t plus 3. That's all one equation. And I personally like to change this thing. If I hit enter, Hmm. Thick. Oops. I see this thing's like a little weird. You have to move off of it to see it. I like that one. Now when I push graph, watch what happens. Uh, the reason nothing happens is because I think I accidentally turned off when I, that equal sign. So now I turn it back on and push graph, and we can see it going through the different uh, T values. Very slowly through those values, I'm gonna change my, my T step to um, 0.5 if it lets me. Second quit. Okay, well, it's not gonna let me for, for now. Maybe if I do second off, if it's a real calculator, I could do it. In the worst case scenario, I could take the batteries out, but in this case, it's not gonna let me, it's, it's gonna go through it all. Unless it finished, let's see. Okay, but that's the idea behind, that's what a parametric equation is, so if nothing else for today, that's a big new concept. Now, here are some skills that you're gonna need to learn about parametric equations besides just how is it defined. Okay, here I'm back to the iPad. I saw a question there. When do we use this? Ah, parametric equations get used a lot. Um, they get used in physics. When you have like the X and Y components, like, like vectors are sort of independent of each other. So we can create equations for, um, we can create equations for, uh, the different motions and then combine them to create, you know, where the X and Y are. We are gonna actually learn some applications starting tomorrow. Okay, uh, next. By the way, I, I wasn't able to show you this, but if you push um, second and table or second and window, it makes, it makes a table or something. Second graph, sorry. 
it makes a table and the table that it makes. Uh, someone asked about T. T does not have to start at zero. Sometimes, often T starts at zero because sometimes in the real world applications, T is talking about time. But no, T doesn't have to start at zero. So here is like another question. I'm going to, just because I'm, I can't go at like good speed with the online, so I'm just going to put this one up there and go straight to the answer. This is a pretty easy, you know, concept of um, plugging in. I would tell you, you know, go from zero, zero to three. And as we can see here, if I graph these points, again, it's the T doesn't get, get graphed. So one comma zero, three comma two, five comma point eight, seven comma one point eight. It makes some kind of strange thing. It's hard to tell what it's going to be. If you thought polar graphs could get pretty crazy looking with cardioids and limestones and rose curves, conchoid of Nicomedes. Wait till you see the kinds of curves we eventually create when we can do parametrics. Now, here's an interesting thing that happens a lot. Often in parametric equations, there are sines and cosines involved. And when this happens, it's useful to make t multiples of 90. And look what happens. 4 cosine 0 is, is 1, so this is 4. Cosine 90 is 0, so that's 0. Cosine of 180 is negative 1, so that's negative 4. Cosine of 270 is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Sine of 90 is 1 times 9 is 9. Sine of 180 is 0. Sine of 270s, negative one. And when, when I plot those points, four, zero, zero, nine, negative four, zero, zero, negative nine, you could type what you suspect. What do you suspect it is? And it is an ellipse. And it's, it's an ellipse that would get graphed starting here and it would be going sort of like in this direction someone asked leo about whether we should put our calculator into radian mode for this it's actually no unlike with polar where radian mode made a lot of sense because um for an equation like r equals theta we, we don't want theta to be like 91 to be something like pi over 2. But for this, whether we call t 0 to 360 or t from 0 to 2 pi, the, the graph comes out the same. Good question. If you switch the cosine to a sine, it would make it counterclockwise. And that is something we're going to be doing eventually. Like, how, what would I have to, what equation would cause this, not just the ellipse to draw, but what would cause the ellipse? to become counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Um, I think the easiest way to make it counterclockwise, however, easiest, but when I say easiest, I mean, um, it's easiest to explain in this way. If I put a minus T in front of, instead of a regular T, then as I put in T is 0, 90, 180, and 270, it would become cosine negative 90, sine negative 90. So Talia said add a minus. Yeah, if you could put the minus in front of, in front of you know, the, the sine, that would also cause it to happen. But actually putting it inside the parentheses is going to be the most useful for us. Well, on a, on a, someone asked about it, does it really matter? I mean, on a test, if I said graph this, I wouldn't be able to see, you know, what order the points happened in. But if I drew a picture and said, like, put a t equals zero here and t equals ninety here, then this would be the answer for it. If we go over to the to the graphing calculator,
we can go ahead whoops, and clear these things out. Oh, John, I'll get to that. I saw a question, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to that one in a second. If I clear out this and this, and I change this to uh, four cosine t, and nine sine t. And let me make the window. I just want t to go from zero to 360. I'll make my t-step like uh, 30 degrees. I better make sure that I am in degree mode, which I'm not. And when I graph, you will see, as expected, nice ellipse. So we have yet another way, another equation for an ellipse. We had a rectangular one, we had a polar one, and now we have a parametric way of uh, describing an ellipse. And there'll be times where parametric will be the most convenient way to describe something, and there are times where polar is, and there's times where uh, rectangular is. Let's see, some people ask some questions. Well, Joan asked about putting the negative there. Well, cosine and negative t and cosine t are really the same thing, so you wouldn't need the negative t. Um, but when, you, when, you, when two things are based on the same angle, it's good when when they both have the same angle, whether it's both a T or both a negative T, but you wouldn't need the negative T there. Okay, let me bring up my, okay. More stuff. Okay. And what if T, someone asked about three dimensions. Yeah, there's a, sometimes there's three equations and you have a Z and you can describe three dimensional things, but that are really complicated with uh, parametric also. Someone remind me at the end of this session, there's some really interesting like Homer Simpson drawn with parametric curves and things like that. I'll, I'll see if I can bring those up. Really complicated equations you could imagine. Um, so here, okay, so that's what parametric equations are and how they could be used to describe like ellipses. Now, if you have an equation, a parametric equation, there's a process called eliminating the parameter, and that's when you create a xy equation with no t in it that would produce the same graph. And it's very simple to eliminate the parameter. All you have to do is take one of the equations and solve for the variable in terms of it, whichever equation is easier, in this case, t equals x over 3. And then you plug that t into both places. And that's called eliminating the parameter. And as you can see, it turns out to be a parabola. Now, sometimes it's really hard to eliminate the parameter, but that's the easiest kind. If one of the equations is linear, you can solve for t in terms of it, the other variable, and then substitute. Now, we know this becomes an ellipse because we saw it graphed. But this one's really hard to eliminate the parameter because you can't, like, cosine inverse both sides. So there is a sneaky trick for eliminating the parameter. And the sneaky trick is to first, oops, the sneaky trick is to first Divide both sides of this equation by 4 and both sides of this equation by 9. And the sneaky trick is to then square both sides. And somebody type into the chat 
why is that so good? What is the last step of this sneaky trick? Yes, adding them, but why? And as Riley says, Pythagorean identity. Yes, when you add those both together, the left side becomes x squared over 16 plus y squared over 81. But the right side becomes 1 because cosine squared of anything plus sine squared of anything equals 1. And that is the way to do that question. I've seen people do some unusual things trying to isolate the t and arc cosine and things like that. But no, the way to do this question is like this. Oh, this is good. We're, we're almost done with the lesson. So if eliminating the parameter is something you can do, the opposite of eliminating parameter is introducing a parameter. Well, for a polynomial equation, it's very easy to introduce a parameter. Anyone know how to, what, what the easiest way would be to create a parametric equation that gets the same graph as y equals x squared? There's infinite solutions, but there's one easiest one. What's, what's one of the equations going to be? Yes, if you make x equal t, then y will be t squared plus 5t plus 1. So you can introduce a parameter like that if it's a polynomial equation. We're almost done. Now for this one, x squared over 16 plus y squared over over 81 equals 1. So that's that's a, that's the ellipse that we were looking at before. To introduce a parameter here is much harder. But here's the trick. Hold on, that I wrote a bunch of things but they didn't appear and now they appeared all at once. If I write this as x over 4 squared plus y over 9 squared equals 1, I'm going to say, I'm going to think this looks kind of like sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So I'm going to say sine t is equal to x over 4 and cosine t is equal to y over 9. That that will fit the equation. So if I make sine t x over 4, because x, squared, because x over 4 squared plus y over 9 squared equals 1, uh, good question. Why not the other way around? I think maybe I should do it the other way around. Might as well have x with the sine. Let me look what I did over here. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. You know, if you switch them around, it seems like it will make it a, a um, it, it would make a rotated, you know, a, a, an ellipse that's sort of wider than it is tall. But I think the sine and cosine might cause it to go back the other way. But yes, we should make the, um, we should make the cosine t this way. And then, I think that's it. I've, oh, and then I multiply both sides by 4. So 4 cosine t equals x and 9 sine t equals y. And there's my parametric equation. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the graphing calculator. I'm going to answer those, those questions. I'm, I'm interested just uh, to look at for myself also. So let me bring the gap graphing calculator back. Jonathan, you wanted to, uh, I'll bring back the iPad in a minute, but let me uh, first see just what happens when I switch if instead I made it the, the other way. Hold on, let me get this thing back. Okay, so this was the equation. Oh, 
you don't have to worry so much about clockwise counterclockwise right now because later on we're going to look at that you know in in, in more detail but certainly um let me, when I bring the iPad back up, I'll I'll uh, say some more stuff about clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, I'm just curious about what happens. Oops, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. So this was when I put the X and Y this way. What if instead I did that other thing where I did um, X equals 4 sine T? just want to see that it creates... The, that it creates the same thing. I'm, I'm suspicious that it's not going to because the whole x, x goes with cosine, y goes with sine. Let's take a look. I suspect it's going to make a sideways. Uh, but let's take a look. Oh, it made the exact same one. Interesting. Generally, we make x go with the cosine. Let's see if I can uh, slow this guy down a bit by putting, change that to like this lollipop one. That usually makes the graph slower. Interesting. Hmm. In general, we're going to make the X go with the cosine and the Y go with the sine. Let me go back to the um, iPad for a minute. Oops. So I want to answer some, some people had some questions about like clockwise, counterclockwise, things like that. Okay, so here, bringing the iPad back. Okay, now if you want to see why, I think the main thing to look at now is Let's just look at the most basic one, which would be if these numbers were the same, 5 cosine t, y equals 5 sine t. When t is 0, sine of 0 is 0, sine of 90, so cos, sorry, cosine of 0 is 1, so this will become 5, and sine of 0 is 0. So the very first point would be here, this is t equals zero, but it's the point five comma zero. But when I put 90 in, cosine of 90 is zero, five times zero is zero, sine of 90 is one, so that's five. So this point over here would be for t equals 90, it would be the point zero comma five. And I yeah. hope that that kind of explains why as it goes from zero to 90, it would go clockwise. Don't worry so much about how why it is that changing why it is that changing t to negative t makes it go in the other direction we're, we're going to be doing a lot with that eventually but for now we'll just put a regular t there let me see what other comments came up there okay leo asks how do we determine which is which given location well, if your equation has, you know, x and y, if the equation is written this way, the x, you know, the x equation tells me the x coordinate of the point and the y equation tells me the, the y coordinate of the point. As far as w which direction it goes, you know, you could just look at two different values like 0 and 90 and just see if the point at 90 is counterclockwise from the point at 0, then it's, then it's going to be uh, counterclockwise. We're going to do more with like direction, but it is interesting, you know, to mess around with that. I am going to bring up, hold on, finish up the lesson. I'm going to bring up a web browser. Here we go. So this is Wolfram Alpha. And I see. 
Uh, Ethan, thumbs up if you could see Wolfram Alpha. Okay. Okay. And if I type in um, parametric picture of Homer Simpson. Well, it's a nice picture, but it's not what I was looking for. Equation. Okay. Okay, so this says Homer Simpson light curve. And look at this really complicated X equation. X of T is minus 11 over 8 sine, all this complicated stuff. And the y equation started over here. And as you can see, uh, there's a nice, surprisingly nice picture there. There are other cartoon characters that they have in Wolfram Alpha that you can see what the parametric equation is for. But it's a, a really complicated equation. Okay, so what we, what we learned today is what parametric equations are, how to graph them, how to uh, eliminate the parameter, how to introduce the parameter, that there's these, uh, somebody spends a lot of time figuring out how to, how to make these, these graphs. Okay, um, and does anyone have any questions? They could either unmute, okay, for the test, you tomorrow put our connection on the same, yeah, you could just submit like a big document that's got the um, your original answers maybe, and then the the corrections. Mainly, oh, and let me let me. We don't need to be on to be recording this part, so let me stop the recording.